um, several several local charities, including I'll include us, SMAS. She's been doing us for I think over thirty years now. Um, Feeding America and local food banks, Alzheimer's Research, uh, the Domestic Violence Crisis Center, Relay for Life, Fairfield County Foundation Fund for Women and Girls, Westport Library Program, and Special Olympics. Obviously. She's uh, very, very well known, very respected in the whole financial industry. She certainly helped us out over the years. So without further ado, I welcome Lori Price. Hi. Hi, thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, yep. great. So um, yes, I've been with the group since 1987 and 275 or so of those 350 speaking engagements have been with the uh, Senior Men's Association. So uh, giving me quite a lot of experience. Um, it's always hard to come up with a topic of the day, given that I've spoken to this group 275 times, but um, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, to, maybe we could get a, a show of hands for the next few uh, presentations. Is there any interest in creative charitable giving concepts? Can we get a, a poll on that? A yes or no? You guys all know how to do that? Steve, you want to tell them how to do it? OK, uh, on your uh, thing, the list, there's a. Uh, area where you can raise your hand if someone's asking questions. So uh, there's a yes and a no. So if you can uh, go to that on the participants list at the bottom of that. Actually, they've moved it. It's on the reactions now. It's on the reactions? Okay. No, it's, the raise hand has been moved to other reactions. So raising hands is a yes and not raising hands is a no? Yes, correct. Okay. All right, if you want to take, um, if you want, we could do something separate just for those who are interested because there are some great um, new techniques that are out there that maybe they're not even new, they're just people don't really know about them. And just recently we've opened uh, three donor advised funds for clients because many of you have had great returns in the stock market and you can use your appreciated stock to get a tax deduction and use that for charitable giving instead of cash. And there are a couple of different ways to do it, but it happened to be just in the last two weeks that, um, that we have three new accounts going into donor advised funds. So I thought that might be something uh, in the future, but it may not be of interest to the whole group. Uh, so if you wanted to, we can either, we can do it either way. I can do it in one of my small groups or we can do it as a separate um, section at some point. Uh, okay, so let me, um, thinking hard again of how to come up with something interesting to talk about after all the things that I've talked about. I wanted to, to um, we can take those hands down. I wanted to know how many of you are aware of what a sector rotation is? And again, maybe we start with a new fresh set of hands. So a sector rotation, we just went through a period almost straight up since 2000 nine of growth. And you could throw a, a dartboard at a growth fund and make money. But the interesting thing is that as of a, two or three months ago, those growth stocks have gotten so highly valued that if you look at the charts of Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft, you'll see that they're, you know, they're going up, 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 and then they're leveling off. And what you're seeing is that the stocks that didn't participate, which is most of the S&P 500, we're flat, 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 and now they're going up. And in the last three months, we've had something that's called a divergence where the value stocks have a significant outperformance on the growth stocks. And usually when that happens, it continues for a while. So part of this is what's called the reopening trade. And you may have heard of the reopening trade, which are the companies that were beaten down, the cruise lines, the restaurant chains, the hotels, uh, they're all now starting to come back equal to or greater than where they were March a year ago, which is 
pretty shocking considering that they're not full yet. The airlines, if you look at the charts and uh, I didn't prepare any chart, but I can pull some up if, uh, I, if you want. I haven't had this big of a group before, so it's a little easier to manage. But um, when you look at the chart on these, out of, what were out of favor, they've been shooting up and the companies that were in favor have been flattening down. And what that leads me to, to believe, and, and, and let's take that one step further, if you owned government bonds, interest rates, which key off of the 10-year treasury, have gone up significantly, and they're almost at 1.5% when less than a year ago, they were down to in that 0.70 range. So what we're seeing is negative returns on your bonds and outsized, outproportioned returns on growth stocks, which I think it's gonna to continue to be underperformance in bonds. And I think we're gonna see an outperformance in value or better priced stocks, growth at a reasonable price, crazy multiples on some of the companies that we see now like Zoom and um, uh, Square and PayPal. And I don't know how many of you were in my small group, but about a year and a half ago, we were comparing GE to Square uh, you still have hands up, so I can't ask the question of who remembers that day when I said, what would you rather own, Square or GE? I see Brian smiling because I think you remember that day. And I said, why would you own a dead stock like GE when you can own a growth stock like Square? Everybody is going to these payment companies. And Square went from roughly 80 to, I believe it's around 240 today. And GE was pretty much about where it was then. It went from 12 down to six, and I think it's back to 12 again. So what you see is the themes. And so what, what all of that introduction leads to is what are the themes that are gonna take us forward for the next year? So anyone wanna chime in? You have a theme that you think is gonna be popular or you want me to start it off? I think most people are muted. I like interaction. Anybody have a theme that they think is going to be hot for the next 12 months or next six months? Like a Disney? A Disney theme going out to theme parks and travel and all that? Yeah. The thing is that Disney just hit an all-time high yeah. and they haven't gotten the revenues yet. So again, I'm skeptical of some of these companies that have gotten almost what I think is a little bit ahead of themselves. Right. On the other hand, where is the growth going to be? So think about um, think about the vaccine companies and the genetic sequencing. How many of you have heard about the fact that we we have these vaccines so fast is because they're able to do genetic sequencing, sequencing the genome? Raise your hands or do something so I can see that there's some. Right, I think most of you have heard about that. So I think that's a very important theme that I've been excited about and I've owned the genomics companies for a long time. I think that's only going to continue. The genomics field is growing by leaps and bounds. Their discoveries, the speed that their Moderna, Moderna just came out with the, uh, the they're working on a variant for the South African vaccine in 30 days. I mean, that's remarkable when you think about it. And it has to do with sequencing. What about data so, analytics like Palantir? Interesting you should say that. I actually, um, I'm not allowed to tell you that I might've just taken a position in that. But um, I think it, data analytics and big data um, it, and the same thing in genomics, companies like Invitae that have the data on genomics are also very popular. So there are ways that you can find a theme. Here's another theme. Did anyone see that they're 3D printing a house? Raise your hand. It was in the news yesterday. Maybe about a third of you that I can see on my screen. They are literally 3D printing with machines in two days. They're framing out a house with three laborers and they're selling it for roughly half the price of a similar house in the same neighborhood. And I don't know about you, but I think that is stunning. And who would have thought 
before you saw that on television that they would be able to 3D print a house. They are 3D printing the swabs that the nasal swabs that they're using in order to do the vaccine, the, uh, the, the speed testing. Did you know that? So there's, a, there's an ETF, PRNT, that buys the companies that are in 3D printing. I'm just using these as examples, do your own research. But what I want you to do is to really think outside the box. When you see something like this is happening, it's, it's, it's an amazing technological breakthrough and it's only in maybe the second inning of where we're going with something like 3D printing. Um, the robotics, autonomous vehicles, you can't, you can't have not heard about what's going on with autonomous vehicles and all the different companies. You got the battery companies, you got the battery charger companies, you've got the chip companies, you've got the software companies and, and the big money, Apple, Google, Tesla, that are all putting money into autonomous vehicles. General Motors is going to be uh, it clean energy and I, I forget if it's five or 10 years. Enormous money going into those sectors. So I wanted to, um, to take the time to, for those who haven't been to any of my, my meetings before, to tell you that what I want you to do is to think about these things. I'm not gonna tell you what to buy. I'm gonna tell you, you should do your own homework, but you should look around you and say, what is going on in the world around us today? It, it's moving so quickly. They used to say that, um, what was it, Intel, that the speed of a chip is going to double and, and then double again and double again. And what's going on in genomics and what's going on in, in this 3D printing, it's, it's, it's going so quickly. The technology that they're able to use, the speed of the supercomputers to do the calculations, the data analytics, the reason that they say Tesla is so many years ahead of all the other autonomous vehicle companies is because they have a three-year head start on gathering the data. Anybody have a comment? Nobody? How about, not talking about Bitcoin, but how about payment systems? How many of you have used PayPal? Okay, and you use PayPal because it's a one click, it's easy, you feel that it's more secure. PayPal stock has gone through the roof. PayPal is out, they're saying they're buying into Bitcoin. I think Square is buying into Bitcoin. They're thinking about the future. And in China, and I've mentioned this numerous times, people don't carry currency. They either have a, they have a bar, they have a, a code, a QR code, it's either blue or green. And one is Alibaba and one is Tencent and they control all the payments in China and they're spreading into Europe and, and you know, across the world where you're not gonna carry currency. You're not gonna need to have that little calculator when you go to Europe to figure out how many euros it is. You're just gonna flash your QR code for whichever payment system you use and it will take care of your payments for you. I mean, these are remarkable changes just in the last few years. How about um, how about online, um, like Zillow? Does anyone own Zillow stock? Raise your hand. Why do you think Zillow is, is a good company to own a stock in? And stocks doubled in the last, you know, whatever, seven, eight months. Anybody? It's eyeballs. How many of you or your children have gone on Zillow to look up the price of a house this year? Is there anyone who hasn't? Where who doesn't know someone who's been on Zillow. So Zillow sells advertising. Every time you go in and you look up a zip code or a house, three realtors names come up on that screen. They're not the realtor that listed the house. They're the realtor that paid money to Zillow to be on the top of the page. So eyeballs is another trend that we probably wouldn't have thought of five years ago. Can you think of other companies where you go to their websites every day? Facebook. Throw out some names. I want some participation here. Amazon. Any websites you go to? Amazon. 
Frequent. Amazon, perfect example. Amazon, they pay to play. Amazon makes very thin margins on the sale of their goods, but they make money in a lot of other places. And they have no, they don't have to carry, they do carry inventory now, but in the beginning, they didn't even have any inventory. How about other companies that don't carry inventory and they're just trading marketplaces like Etsy? eBay. eBay. Any other places where you go two, three times a week? Google. Google. Okay. Do you own the stock? No. <laughs> Walmart. Walmart. Okay. Would have been a great stock. I think it's up 40% in the last several months. Costco. Costco's been a, an incredible stock. But you don't go to the Costco website, do you? You go to the store. When Costco really starts to monetize their website and take over from Walmart, if they can, but Walmart's monetized their website now. Walmart competes. I go and buy things from Walmart. They deliver them in the same day from the Walmart store down the street. So, you know, that's another really interesting. Now, is, did I say anything that wasn't common sense or obvious to you? Well, well, the actually, Amazon does it in two hours now using uh, Instacart. Depending so what you're getting. I get a delivery from Amazon in two hours. Are you talking about food? It, yes. Yeah, they can't deliver me that, a, a sofa, you know, or something like that. Yes, well, they can, but it takes longer to do it. But right, yes, right. you can. You can order anything online and, and somehow or another you'll get everything. Okay, anybody ever go on? You can, whatever you want to do. They take longer, uh, but uh, they do provide that service as well. Anybody ever go on Wayfair? Another stock that's gone through the roof. So when you go shopping online, there's actually a, um, a, a service called Popcart. How many have heard of Popcart? So when you go on Amazon or you go on Walmart, if you've registered for Popcart, it literally goes out and checks all the other sites to see if you got the best price while you're on Amazon or Walmart. How about that one? I use Popcart. I was just buying some, I use um, elbow braces when I play sports. And after a while, they, you have to replace them. They get kind of worn out. So I went online the other day to the Walmart site and Popcart came up and put Amazon in the window and said, there's a better price at Amazon. <laughs> Is that popcart.com? Yep. You should, I think it's .com. It came up one day on, on something that I was doing. It said, do you want to try Popcart? I said, sure, let's see how it works. And it's amazing. And whatever site you're on, if you have Popcart, it will pop up if there's an equal, exactly the same merchandise. It's not going to take, you know, Coke or Pepsi. It has to be Coke or Coke. Right? Or honey, honey does that too. And Honey does that also, yep. And there are now competing. Now, why does Popcart, how does Popcart make any money? Sell ads? I guess. I don't know. I haven't figured that one out yet. That's not a stock I would buy. It's a great service. But, you know, sometimes these things are great ideas and concepts and they're great for the consumer. How do you monetize it? It's like when Twitter came out, nobody wanted to go to Twitter to see ads. And Twitter's now just starting to, sh to, to throw ads in because how else did Twitter make any money? Everyone was posting whatever they wanted. Twitter had to have a staff to supervise it. They had to have programmers. And they were just sucking money away, but they hadn't figured out how to monetize it yet. What does that mean, Mara? When, when you use the term monetize in that way, what do you mean? Okay, so when you go on Facebook, in the first, do you have Facebook? Yes. Okay, so in the first two minutes that you're on Facebook, how many ads do you see? On the right-hand side? See? Yeah, some. Okay. Yeah. Everyone that you see is paying you. When you go on Twitter, are you on Twitter? No. Okay, I personally hate Twitter. And the only time I go is if I get a pop-up of somebody I know put something on that I have to read. But when you go on Twitter, you don't get ads. You just get a feed of people's. So where are they getting money from? Where's the revenue coming from in Twitter? We can see it on Facebook. We can see it on Amazon. We can see it on Zillow. Realtor.com is now copying Zillow. TripAdvisor. Anybody use TripAdvisor? Well, we don't travel anymore, but I still see TripAdvisor, right? Yep. So TripAdvisor, check out these stocks. Take a look at the chart on these stocks. During this pandemic, when people are home, what are they doing? They're not going to the mall. 
their eyeballs on a page. Mm -hmm. And the companies that are making the most money have figured out how to sell advertising or make a spread on, on the products that, the, that are being sold, like Etsy does. Etsy makes a small spread and they sell advertising. What about uh, a stock like ONLN, which is, uh, it's a stock listed on the exchange, but they, I guess, buy shares and they, they have shares of all of these uh, Amazons and uh, Alibaba. I'm not uh, familiar with o, o -L -O -N -L -N. O -N -L -N. What's the name of it? I'm not sure I can find out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I, I, that, you stumped me. First, that might be at first, I've been stumped on this group. But uh, <laughs> there are any, any fund ETF or closed end fund that you've bought that owns the growth stocks. You've you've done great with you know everyone's if you if you watch CNBC you've heard about the Arc Innovation Fund, which we I've talked about. Um, the Arc family of funds does these theme funds, all innovation. They have autonomous and robotics. They have the 3D printing. They actually have an Israel Technology Fund, IZRL. They have um, I said the robotics. They have a financial uh, payments the, the uh, financials in a financial innovation fund. Um, I'm sure I'm missing one. They have the um, Internet Cloud Innovation Fund, and they focus on the companies who are going to most benefit. They're, it's not an index. It's actually managed, actively managed. They buy and sell. This week, when Tesla went down about 150 points, they came in and heavily bought because Tesla is their biggest holding. And they bought it and they 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 basically bought it at the low and then it bounced back so, you know from there it's been bouncing back up and down but they've been high conviction on tesla because tesla has a lead and in the innovation of autonomous vehicles clean energy clean energy is another one i love clean energy you can get um icln is the iShare, which is global qcln is from first trust which is domestic but they're up 40, 50% since December. And this week, they all came down. This was a week when value took over from growth. The growth companies took a little correction and the value stocks, the airlines, the hotels. If you look at the charts on, on Marriott or Alaska Air or some of these, they're all at, they're at all time highs or they're at 12 month highs, which is astounding because they still haven't recovered to the point that they were a year ago. So it's all the anticipation of where are we going? What will be good? Any I'm other? Some of the media companies that, uh, you know, Washington Post and New York Times are dying because all of their advertising revenue went away, but they've come back majorly on the uh, uh, online uh, presentation. Have they been able to monetize their uh, increased uh, circulation? So that's an interesting point. Subscriptions, right? We've become a subscription society. You see all the Pelotons, right? You buy the bike, but you buy the subscription that you pay every month, right? There's a company called Stitch Fix that'll send you, if you're a, like one of the women that works for me, when we used to go to the office, would get a, a shipment of outfits that were pre-sized and you could wear different outfits, you send them back and the next month they send you another shipment. You pay a subscription fee instead of going out and buying new clothes. Pretty interesting concept, right? So the subscription economy is what we're in. So now you've got, uh, I personally have a New York Times online subscription. How many people have a New York Times subscription or a Washington Post? What is it, uh, $12 a month or something? But you get a lot of content and you have to choose, do I want, Washington Post and New York Times, maybe that's overkill. I don't want to spend 25 a month. Which one am I going to choose? So what's going on in media now? You've got Disney Plus. Now they have Peacock. They announced today, um, CBS Viacom announced one today, um, whatever the name of their studio is. Um, Paramount. Paramount, thank you. Paramount Plus. Um, you know, we've got um, Roku, which would have been a great stock. Roku basically filters all the other channels into one little, you know, 
box that you can stick into your non-smart TV or you can use a Roku subscription and you can watch it anywhere on your, on your computer, on your iPad, on your phone, right? Most anybody watch, you watch TV on your, on your iPads and your computers all the time. Take your, your laptop out. Well, I'm in Florida. I can take my laptop out on my lanai and, and watch CNBC or watch a movie outside without having to buy an outside television, right? We have so much technology being thrown at us. So the, the subscriptions, you have to make choices because all of a sudden when you add it up and, you're, and some people are sharing Amazon Prime, how many people have Amazon Prime, right? And they give you music and they give you shows and they give you the free delivery. So they've packaged theirs a different way. Apple, anybody have the Apple? Apple now is packaging their stuff. I have an Apple music subscription because I'm in the Apple universe. I don't have the Amazon music. I don't have um, um, some of the other uh, Spotify. I don't have those. You only need one and you got to choose which one. And the question is, at some point, will there be a loser? Who's going to be the loser? Right? Who's late to the party? Is Peacock late to the party? Is Paramount late to the party? Everyone's got their subscription to Disney. They're happy with it. They're not going to go out and buy another Paramount because that's another $10 a month. Some of them let you share. How many people are sharing a family subscription to uh, whatever, Disney Plus? Right? Most of you are raising your hands. You share with your children and your grandchildren. So you're paying once for that. Some of them are, are not letting you pay more. Than, you know, One person, one subscription. Some are one person. Uh, one subscription for four people. I don't know the answer to who's going to win that war. I know that Disney um, killed it, right? Anybody have a Disney Plus subscription? You see The Mandalorian? I thought that was really good, but you have to like Star Wars. Laurie, in so, answer to that question about ONLN, it's ProShares Online Retail ETF. Oh yeah, the online retailers. Good. There are there are like a half a dozen online yeah. retail um, ETFs that and are. And this out one, there. the top ten holdings are Amazon, Quare Retail Inc., eBay, Grubhub, Etsy, Chewy, Wayfair, Stitch Fix, Stamps.com, and Magna Magnite. Plus, they have some communication. Six they they have sixteen uh, percent in communication services. So think about yeah. Chewy. How many of you use Chewy? Or know what Chewy is? Chewy is, uh, it, it's pet food. They deliver those 50 pound bags of pet food to your door so you're not lugging them home. And it's been amazingly successful. Now, they have to make a margin on their, on their spread. I've not, I don't have a pet right now, so I don't know if they have advertising on their website. I would imagine they do because when you go to order, you go online to their website, they have an eyeball they can shoot some, some advertising at you. Or the products themselves will pay to be, if you searched parakeet food and there are three companies, one of them is gonna pay more money to be the first one on the list, right? Just like Google, you pay to play. So again, when you go online and you see, you always see the same product first, you should know that they're paying to be seen, but maybe they're making more money because everyone's buying the first thing on the page. You don't go six pages in to find a certain product. You, it pops up on the screen. You say, I like that. Popcart tells you the price is good and you buy it and you use your PayPal to pay for it, right? I happen to like using PayPal and I, and I wish every place would let me use PayPal because then they summarize it for me. I get a little thing, I feel secure. I don't have to punch in any more, you know, credit card information on some random website that I've never used before. Any other, anything that we haven't talked about the, that's a theme? I'm sure there are, we have, to, we have to think hard to come up with them. What's going out of style besides walls and office space? I don't think that we in my office will ever have as much office space as we had before. We've already downsized significantly. And then after COVID, we may add another office or two, but we downsized. And I know a lot of places are saying, if you like working home, go ahead and work home. If you wanna to move to Missouri or Texas or Florida and you can do your work, we're gonna let you do that. 
which is hurting the states, right? Because they're losing state income tax in a big way. New York City, big example. Anybody have a, a, a child who's moved out of where they were because they could work remotely? I only I see one hand, two hands. I'm sure there are more. And that has been a boon for uh, residential or vacation home real estate. And what does it hurt? Something, something wins and something loses. New York City rent. Rent is cheap in New York now, right? <laughs> Relatively. <laughs> Relative to what it was. But if you want to go out to the beach towns of Connecticut and buy a property, how, how, is, how have your homes done in Stanford in the last 12 months? Residential real estate values have gone up. So there's another something else to think about, which is why Zillow and Realtor.com are doing very well. Because people are trolling and buying houses sight unseen because they saw the pictures on Zillow. Lori, if I might, for future sectors to look at, a little research in uh, like Popular Mechanics or Wired magazines will give you, they are testing in New Zealand, transmitting electricity without wires. They are building a network that will transmit the electricity from one cell tower, so to speak, to another. And that's, you know, keep reading on that. It might turn out to be something very promising. Um, it's just things like that. So there are other sources other than business magazines that you want to look at for future ideas as to what may be possible and where something may be going. That's really interesting. I think the idea of that was originally done by Tesla, not the company, the man. Yeah. Right? right I, like think I, think that, I think that's one of the things it mentioned in, uh, in, in Popular Mechanics. Like but, in um, 1910 or something, know. Tesla figured that out, that they could do that. Well, they, they could certainly use it in Texas, ASAP, right? <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Well, that's an interesting idea, though. When you, when you, again, you're thinking about um, electricity, clean energy, energy storage, right? Is that the quantum scape? Anybody, anybody looking into quantum scape, which I think no. Bill Gates is invested in? Do you know much about it? No, but I've got a series of articles on it that I'm going to read to try and understand quantum mechanics. I don't know how successful I'll be. Right. But I believe that's part of what they're, they're talking about is the, you can, you can grab the solar energy, but you have to be able to store it for a cloudy day, right? And then retransmit it. So that's another area that I think as we move away from the fossil fuels and into the solar and the wind, they have to find a way to store it. So I think that's another really interesting um, for the scientists in the room. That's something that's really interesting to look into. One of the big objections about wind power is that uh, the cables, uh, the wires go across a lot of territory before they get to a power station. And if you could transmit it without those uh, wires going across people's property or around people's property, that would bring uh, wind power up to the front even more. Yeah, plus they're ugly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the field of it's these, offshore you know. or on a hill or something. Well, when I was in France, I don't know, maybe it was uh, seven or eight years ago in, you know, Dijon, where they make the Dijon mustard. Has anybody been there driven yes. to Dijon? Did you yes. see the fields? They're just, it must be extremely windy there all the time. They're just fields and fields of the wind uh, turbines going. Normandy too. Huh? Normandy, Normandy too. But it was ugly. You know, here are these fields of mustard and then, you know, you, you see these, the, the wind things going on. But, um, you know, on, on the other hand. Not as ugly as black smoke coming out of a smokestack all over the place. Or I, uh, I agree. I agree. I'm a big proponent of that. Yeah, so, out in Rhode Island, they're putting them uh, off of Rhode Island. They're putting them out in the, uh, in the Atlantic and bringing the power into Rhode Island. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the one whose view got, you know, <laughs> got changed by that. But um, I think it's important that we have the alternative energy because of the pollution. 
I mean, when you don't okay, so here in the three D space, three D printing space, is the best opportunity in the people who make the materials, the people who make the machines, or the people who operate the machines to make product. So I am not an expert. So I just buy the ETF and let them pick which companies they want to own. The one I use is PRNT. But that's just, you know, you can do your research. Like First Trust puts them, you know, a lot of different companies are putting out um, these sector ETFs. So you can, you can search and find uh, which ones are doing it. So that's, that's rather, leave the expertise to the experts. If you pick your theme, then you can find a fund that's going to own 10 or 20 or 30 of those companies because it's going to be very hard. It's hard right now in the media space. Who's going to be the winner? You know, Disney or Peacock or, you know, Amazon Prime or, you know, they're all coming up with original content. But meanwhile, Disney's got this library. Turner has a library, right? So, you know, who's going to be the winner in the long run? I don't know. What about in, um, in the vaccine world, right? We have multiple companies with the vaccines, but right now there's enough demand for everybody. When you're just doing the boosters, will there be as much demand for all of these different companies to be producing the vaccines? I don't know. How many of you have had a shot, interestingly? Anybody that hasn't had a first shot? Couple? I had one, but um, okay. Well, that's good. Does it make you feel like maybe we're turning the corner, getting that yes. shot? Yes. And I think that's part of why those reopening stocks have done so well, because the feeling that several million people so far have gotten vaccines, that the death rate is going down, the hospitalization rate is going down, that maybe by the, by the summer, which the stock market always looks out six months, by the summer, all of those you know, travel companies and restaurants and the reopening will happen. I don't know about office space. So then the next challenge is to figure out what isn't coming back. Anybody know what else isn't coming back? Retail. Travel. I think travel will come back. I, I think from what the cruise lines, and this is personal opinion, I don't have any statistics, but the cruise lines are saying that their people are booking cruises left and right. I mean, they are, you know, you look out a year, everyone wants to make up for the trips they didn't get to take. And, um, you know, the hotels are doing pretty well too. So I don't know. I, I, that's going to be very interesting. I think the high end restaurants are going to have a little problem. I think people are kind of, I don't know about you guys, but I, and I don't do a lot of takeout, but a lot of people have gotten used to the takeout. They get their own wine. They don't have to pay the tip. They, they get the same food. They come home, they have the, the comfort of their home and they're, they're eating this meal or they get it delivered from DoorDash. And so the restaurants, if they don't have a full house and they're a high-end restaurant, they need to put food on the table to pay their wait staff to, to you know, to be able to support the expensive wines and everything that they're doing. So that's going to be interesting to see. If people don't go back to the office, they're not going to have business dinners. I think that's going to be an interesting, um, interesting to see how those, those really high-end restaurants do when all this comes back. Anybody have a comment on that? Yeah, I think high-end hotels will be in the same problem. There's no business travel. Nobody's going to spend thousands of dollars for hotel rooms. All right. I don't, I usually go to a conference almost every month or I had been for many years or, or even if it was just a weekend thing. And at least once a month I was traveling somewhere and um, I don't have anything on my calendar in the way of an in-person conference yet. In, so in that token, uh, some companies, uh, Gartner, for example, uh, a major portion of their annual income was from their uh, technical conferences uh, around the world. And those have stopped. Uh, so, I mean, would they come back? I mean, that, that's you know, another, I mean, they had thousands of people attending these conferences. Right. Have any of you tried to do a virtual? Our company did, we had a 5,000 person <coughs> conference every year and they, 
tried to do it virtually. And to me, the interaction with the people was the best part of going to the conferences, not what the speaker had to say, because you can always just search and, you know, you can watch a TED talk if you really want to see something. So they go to all the trouble of putting together these virtual conferences, but it's just not the same. So I, you know, I think when they have conferences again, I will go. Um, but that's been a while. I mean, they don't have anything scheduled right now. I think they really have to get through this, this mess that we're in before anybody's going to literally schedule an in-person conference. <coughs> what about sports and athletic events? Uh, getting, getting people coming back to the stadiums and the arenas. It's interesting to say that we have spring training, a 15 minute drive from me. We have two spring training facilities. Uh, we have the Marlins and the Cardinals and the Astros. And uh, I don't remember who the other one is, but they're within a half an hour drive of where I am right now. Last year, I went to see the Yankees play the Cardinals in the spring training, literally 15 minute drive up, walk in $15 tickets, you know, you get your hot dog, you get to watch a baseball game. I was really looking forward to doing that again. I was at the last game that they had at the stadium before they closed it for COVID last year. It was in very beginning of March. And um, they are doing spring training, but right now they're not allowing any spectators, at least here. So I don't know when that's, and, and they're using the parking lots as um, testing, you know, the drive-through testing is in the stadium parking lots at a lot of stadiums, right? They're doing shots at the Hard Rock where the Dolphins play. Not the same in Connecticut because it's a little colder, but uh, a lot of, uh, in California too, the Dodgers parking lot is, is, a, is a vaccination line right now, right? You've probably all seen that. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're, how many of you usually go to a game every year? Pretty much. Yeah. I think that, that we're all looking forward to that too. And then again, in the summer, if you have enough people that are vaccinated and you show your card to get in that I've been vaccinated and you wear your mask, maybe they'll be able to let more people come into the games. They are letting people into basketball games. I don't know if you see that on TV, but. Yeah, they had 10% at Madison Square Garden. 2,000 people. Uh, right. So what else isn't gonna come back? Maybe uh, I think business travel um, and ho people, hotels that cater to business travelers will not come back. I think much more will be done via uh, conferencing, teleconferencing and uh, those uh, techniques. I'll tell you one. I've spent my whole career in the printed newspaper business. All right. My neighbor still gets his New York Times every day in his driveway. <laughs> I get three papers every day in my driveway. I'm a, a real dinosaur. How many of you get a newspaper delivered? <laughs> okay, maybe half. Half, half a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's true. And, the, and the, the, the next generation doesn't get their news from newspapers. That's true. Um, what else? My how, about, how many of you have been have used the teledoc. Instead of going to your doctor's office, you did a video conference with your doctor. Here's the question. Did you like that enough that you would do that versus an in-person visit? Yes. I would say no. Yes, but qualified. You know, there are some <laughs> things that, uh, you know, doctor laying hands on sometimes finds things that, uh, you can't describe over the phone. Anybody else? No. If you had flu symptoms and there wasn't I prefer COVID. To to the doctor. I prefer to go to the doctor because he can see things that I might not really think of. And they come up with ideas that I, I wouldn't over the phone. I think what's going to happen, and this is, again, just an opinion, you do your first visit in person, but your follow-ups are probably going to be easier for the, the doctor's time and your time, and also who wants to go to a potential doctor's office where somebody who's sick has just been in the waiting room, right? 
Yeah. So, so um, I think that's an interesting, I think that's going to stay, but it may taper off a little bit, the, the teledoc um, phenomenon. But I think it helps the doctors too, because it's way more efficient for use of their time. You know, they can, they can book those appointments, you know, I think more consistently, you're not going to wait as long when you, when you have an appointment on the teledoc, you kind of get your appointment at the right time. You're not sitting there for 45 minutes waiting for the doctor. I think, I don't know if you, that's been your experiences. So we're not going to go to the malls anymore. We're going to buy our clothes online or we're going to use Stitch Fix and get our clothes delivered and then send them back. If you're, if you're staying home, who needs clothes anymore? <laughs> well, that's true too. You guys aren't, the, you're not going back. I mean, no, ser seriously, right. if you don't, if you're not going out, you're not traveling, you're not going to uh, restaurants, uh, where you want to, you know, dress and you're just staying at home. I mean, you can get the finest food, uh, drive up and get it home and still stay in your uh, sweat, so to speak. How many of you get your, get your regular groceries delivered? I can't, is that just a couple? Grocery delivery, just a couple, okay. Do you think that's gonna continue? For a long time. You like getting your groceries delivered? Absolutely. Okay. What I found is, what I found is I don't uh, spend as much money as when I go out shopping because when you're online, you sort of don't look around. You know, you walk into Costco to buy that five dollar chicken, like I tell everybody, <laughs> cost me 150 bucks. <laughs> well, that's probably why Costco is not a big online service. <laughs> They're missing, I think they're missing the boat because there's so many members that would, would do that if they, I don't think Costco, does Costco offer online shopping? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. But they don't Every have day. prices. They don't, you can't <laughs> find prices. But do Every they do day. They you do deliver. They have to get their prices. No, they have, uh, they advertise uh, specials. Yeah. Uh, or how much you off? Know, two or three days. Price. Right. No, they have the price on a lot of items. We've bought uh, clothing um, online, and they ship it uh, free of charge. Okay. I'm, I'm not aware of that. I don't, I'm, not, I'm actually not a Costco member, so I don't know that. No. Anything else that you think of that you do every day, you go on the computer and you go on it every day? Email. Well, other than New York email. Times. Okay, and the New York, the newspaper, the news. Yeah. Yeah. Market Watch. Do you have a subscription now to Market Watch? Uh, I don't pay for it, but I go on it. It's open. Well, it's not open anymore. Not to me, because now it says to me, if you want to read this article, you have to get a subscription. So that's oh. Market Watch trying to monetize what had been free for a long time. That's right. Dow Jones. They can't sell Wall Street journals. They're trying to get their money on Market Watch now. That's it, exactly. But uh, I don't know if anyone else has done that. But I was getting Market Watch headlines, and then every time I would click on the headline, it would say you have to pay a subscription fee to read this. Same thing with Bloomberg. They tease you, and then you know when you're hooked on it, then they start to. Anybody get the Bloomberg uh, daily briefing? I got so the Fortune back... daily briefing. Yeah, so they get Fortune these paragraphs. And then that you want to click on it and read more. And it says, oh, we have a special right. this month. You can buy a subscription for $299, you know, and you're just like, eh, I can get my news for free somewhere else. So thank you, but no, thank you. Uh, you but, talk about buying industries, I think shopping centers and department stores will yeah. be uh, dead. I think places that carry inventory a large inventory are the ones that are suffering the most. Because well, I'm off to a department store right now to go get a COVID shot. So I'll have to take my leave. Where is that? Which one? Morton Taylor. Oh, but that's closed, isn't it? The parking lot's open. <laughs> <laughs> so that went out of business. Lord and Taylor went out of business. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what my time limit is on this uh, meeting. Whoever's uh, in charge here. 1145. We're done. 
Okay, so we got about eight minutes. So before we run out of time, I just want to kind of summarize that with our investments right now, bonds are in trouble because interest rates are going up. Well, here's another thing we didn't talk about. So if you had a large position in government bond funds, you're probably down. You've probably got a loss. And have you ever heard of tax loss harvesting? Yes. Okay. So when you have a position like that, if you're an active manager of your own funds, you can do something called tax loss harvesting. And if you still want to have government bonds, you can sell your Nuveen government bond fund and you can buy a Franklin government bond fund, or you can go from a, a long-term government bond fund to a short-term government bond fund. You're still going to have your safe money, but now you're going to book that loss. And truthfully, I think that bonds are not going to make you any money anyway. So at least you can use your tax loss to save money on your taxes for 2021. So that's just something else to think about. Where would I put that bond money if I didn't want to stay in the government bonds? I would probably look for floating rate bond funds where when interest rates go up, the, re the bonds reset. They're riskier than government bonds, but you're not going to make any money on government bonds this year, in my opinion. If anything, you'll probably continue to lose money because interest rates are trending higher. And if we get this big stimulus package, what's going to happen? You flood the money out there and Joel's nodding his head as an economist. There's a likelihood that we're not going to see under 1% on the 10 year treasury anymore. Unknown so, so given that situation, you should reposition your bond funds. Take advantage of those losses if you have them and book them and then decide, do you want to stay with what you had and buy a different company, buy a different duration, buy corporate instead of government, buy floating rate, by emerging market bonds. There are a lot of different things to do, but you probably aren't gonna make any money with your US government bond funds. So that's a place to book your loss and move on. Buy some nice dividend paying stocks. Good state Johnson & Johnson. If you don't own Johnson & Johnson, it pays a nice dividend. Pretty steady, pretty reliable dividend. Companies like that, where you can get Verizon companies that are gonna pay their dividends and you're going to make a lot more money on those than your government bond funds are, but they're riskier. Although, like I said, I think government bonds are going to lose money. They're not going to lose a lot, but they are going to, they're, they're already losers year to date. So I wanted to make sure to, to kind of remind you, it's not all about the equity markets and all these themes, but government bonds going down, gold is going nowhere because of Bitcoin. Gold was a good place with inflation, but gold may not be an inflation play anymore. I don't know if anyone has been reading about that. But a lot of uh, companies are trying to make Bitcoin a currency, which is what gold was supposed to be. When things went bad, you'd say, I have, a, you know, I have an ounce of gold. Well, gold isn't that what it used to be, but now you say, I have a, I have a Bitcoin, right? So <laughs> oh, my battery is low. I'm about, to, I'm about to get blown out of here unless I plug in real fast. Nope. Um, Oop. You're 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 frozen. She ran out of juice. Ah. <laughs> she disappeared. Well, must be in Texas. <laughs> we, we we did not have her on a timer. No. I don't know why she disappeared. She ran out of power. Her her battery ran out. Ah. Yeah, she knew something was happening. Well. We'll send her a personal thank you for being with us. Uh, Joe, you got more to say? I, I, I have one comment. Um, for those of you who may not notice that the uh, raised hand function in Zoom has changed with their latest update. So it's now located in the uh, reaction button at the lower part of your screen. Or That's if you click on participants and bring up the list of participants, it's still there as a raised hand. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, not yeah. on the menu anymore. Not on mine. Because yeah. you're, are you a co-host? I just, I, just, I just upgraded yesterday to Zoom's latest version. Well, I, uh, the other thing is, are you, I don't know if you're a co-host or not. I'm not. I'm not. Because I got, 
when I switch back to my computer, I'm not co-host anymore. So I'm looking at what everybody else sees. And I don't see a raise hand other participants anymore. Well, you got the yes button, the no button. Not on the participant screen. It's on the reaction screen, the well, reaction button. I do, but I didn't upgrade. Yeah. So you might think about- I don't even see a reaction screen. Reactions is the bottom of the blue. No, see, reactions is not the, Reactions just as a hand clap, a th th thumbs up, a heart. And... That's the old. That's the old release. The new release has changed, and they, they did that a couple of days ago. Huh. I haven't heard anything. There's a new update. Okay. It'll, it'll tell you. It just happens. Okay. Well, anyway, anyway, go ahead, Joe. The one thing about the Zoom meetings, uh, I just saved fifty dollars today because otherwise I would have sponsored coffee for my birthday. <laughs> you, owe, you owe us. <laughs> so, uh, happy birthday! Thank you. What happy time birthday. do we come over for coffee? Uh, <laughs> one at a time. Fifteen minutes spread. Wear masks, and you got to drink your coffee through the mask. <laughs> bring your own. Donuts. Guys, I shovel. And bring your own. I shoveled donuts. off my. I shoveled the snow off my deck yesterday. So my deck is clear. <laughs> yeah. well, I We're grilling to, uh, tonight. I'm taking the snow off. <laughs> I still got a load of snow on my uh, patio. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, got my second shot uh, yesterday. So I, uh, no pain, no nothing, just a little, you know, if I touch the spot, it's, you know, it's there. Uh, other than that, I think, uh, okay, I uh, I can't do anything. Uh, so, Steve, are you still with us? He's, yeah, I just got back. Oh, he's on. I actually oh, okay. just got back. Yeah, well, you're, you're the only one that can do anything. And uh, Lori got knocked out. So I got her. I'm letting her back in. Okay, oh. good. I don't know if she's long yet or not. Yeah, because I'm just the. It shows that she. Lori, are you on? If she ran out of power, she's going to have to reboot and restart the computer. Well, that's what she's going to take a while. It says her video is on, but I don't see voice yet. I see here yeah, no uh, no audio. Oh, no audio. It says there's video. Huh. Well, she's trying. Hmm. Wait a few. No. Uh, looks like she's gone. Yeah. Hey, Larry, can you send me her email address? Larry? Wait, wait, there's a phone trying to get in. Could that be her? I could. 203 exchange. Hello, Lori. I can see. I... Can there see she you. is. Yeah. Can't hear you yet. Hmm. 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 Good video, no audio. It says connected Hello. to audio. Oh, okay. There she is. Okay. Unmute Sorry, yourself. Sir. There yeah. you go. I tried to get back in and I was waiting for admission. Sorry about that. My uh, laptop said it had an hour and a half, but it didn't, obviously. Um, I'm just back on my um, on my iPad here. So uh, okay. So, so anyway, I was wrapping it up just to to remind you that what I think you need to do is to 
be proactive, take your book your losses on the on the bond funds that you have. If you want to stay with bonds, move them into something else, but take advantage of the loss harvesting that you can do right now. And then look for some of these interesting themes that, that we were talking about. Um, and, um, you know, put your toe in the water, you know, whether it's 3D printing or robotics or genomics, um, online retailing. There's just a ton of really interesting opportunities out there. And, um, you know, just have to be a little proactive. So that's all I've got. Well, thank you, Laurie, very much for uh, an excellent uh, description of all kinds of things. Um, it turns out we're now your 276th of your 350. <laughs> so hope you'll join us again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we'll turn it back over to Joe. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Lori, uh, again, for a great presentation. And uh, I'd like to close the meeting, guys. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Don't forget, get your shots. And God willing, we're here next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. So long, everyone. Bye. Have a good week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.